bringing the people behind our food to life. The question about mercury in seafood has been around for the last you know, 20 or 30 years, and it's still an active debate that's going on. Seafood is one of the few food items that really has tremendous health benefits, uh, but certain compounds can, can have certain uh, we can promote certain risks too as well. And so what it comes down to in terms of the regulatory agencies and, um, and scientists is how do, you ben how do you balance those risks and benefits. Uh, the, some of the benefits in seafood and especially in tuna are the very high levels of what we call long chain omega-3 fatty acids, cosapentaenoic acid, EPA, and cosahexaenoic acid, DHA. Uh, they have been shown to reduce coronary heart disease and over the last 50 15, uh, 20 years show that they have a, a pretty dramatic effect on cognitive development too. So they're important, they're important for um, expectant mothers and young children in the development of the nervous system. So you have these really positive beneficial effects going on at the same time there are some potential risks depending on the levels of mercury in the fish. And so uh, the FDA came out with a list of fish for, to avoid for expecting uh, uh, mothers and uh, also for young children. And that tended to be, uh, a, a, there were four fish that were, they were kind of said they shouldn't eat, such as swordfish, tilefish, um, king mackerel, and, uh, and they also, with albacore tuna, they said it has uh, kind of more moderate levels. Um, I think it was like 0.37 parts per million and that you should only be eating uh, six ounces once a week. Uh, so with that, there was a focus on tuna. Uh, and we started out actually um, looking at, again, the, the West Coast fishery kind of goes from, well, really from mid-California all the way through Oregon and Washington. It, it starts earlier in the season in California, and then by July, it's uh, you know full bore in the Oregon, Washington area. And we actually first started out seeing if there was differences in the omega-3 fatty acids. If uh, fish in certain areas or certain times of the year uh, tended to have higher levels of omega-3s. In the later part of the year, they tended to go up higher because uh, the theory is that they come over to the West Coast to begin their feeding, and as they're going through their feeding cycle, they tend to have higher, higher lipid levels. And then at the same time, we realized this would be a great opportunity to look at the mercury levels in the fish as well. So one of the things that struck us was, you know, certainly in terms of uh, mercury is oftentimes measured in parts per million, and the FDA has a limit of, of one part per million per fish. And what had been reported with albacore tuna, uh, again, looking at canned tuna, and these tuna usually are m much larger in size, you know, being caught from the South Pacific, uh, that these levels were a lot lower than, I think the FDA had the canned tuna levels at like 0.37 parts per million, and we were really coming in a range of everything from um, like 0.08 to up to maybe 0.3, with an average of about 0.12 or 0.14 parts per million mercury in the t in the tuna. So this showed us that the bigger the fish, the more the more the mercury really held true, and that um, these fish, being younger fish, uh, juveniles being caught off the coast, tend to have uh, tended to have lower mercury levels. While at the same time, uh, we're higher in uh, lipid levels as well. And the other benefit, especially with canned albacore tuna off the west coast, you know, the traditional uh, established canneries, they're really twice cooking the fish, where you, you steam the fish, get it cooked, then you pick the meat, and then you put it in the can, and then it goes through a retort process to process the, you know, you know, the fish in the, in the can itself. That tends to um, bleed off some of the lipids, uh, and they just sort of come, come through the through the muscle and a lot is left outside the can. So where the um, canneries off the west coast, uh, they tend to be small micro canneries we call them, uh, they're just taking the flesh, putting it in the can, so it's really only a one cook. And so all those great lipids are staying in the can itself, and plus you're not twice cooking the meat and it's, it's just really a different tasting fish than your typical canned tuna. It has a, has a wonderful taste and has really uh, higher concentrations for the most part of the omega-3 fatty acids.
There's been, um, uh, well, you know, certainly in the, in the, it started in the 1990s and, and then through the last decade too, uh, really contentious debate about uh, uh, seafood consumption and and even to the point where you know some health uh, advocates say that once a woman is pregnant you know they they should not eat seafood uh, because it could be cause danger to the uh, to the infant and really the biggest danger is if you do not eat seafood I mean time and time again the studies have shown with the um, with you know the nutrients that are in fish and shellfish and especially those um, long chain omega-3 uh, omega fatty acids, EPA and DHA, they are essential to, um, to the development of the nervous system and cognitive development that really begins in the fetus and in the, um, in the, in the young child too as well.